Matthew Walker knots are somewhat famous because in olden times they were the only knot named after a man. And uh, of course Ashley, the great Clifford Ashley, in his Ashley Book of Knots tells the story that Matthew Walker saved his life when a judge told him if he could tie a knot that the judge could neither tie nor untie, he would pardon him. And Matthew Walker went to a cell, tied the Matthew Walker knot, and was pardoned. So it has been a famous knot for many years. This is the standard uh, three-strand Matthew Walker knot that I'm demonstrating here. In the first part of this video, I will demonstrate traditional methods of tying the Matthew Walker knots. Later in the video, I will demonstrate new methods and introduce new systematic terminology for some Matthew Walker knots. For reference purposes, I will use knot numbers from the Ashley Book of Knots in this video. The great Clifford Ashley concentrated on who first named or described a particular knot. He used traditional names for knots. It is my opinion, following an analysis of the Matthew Walker knots, that new systematic knot names need to be introduced. The general understanding of some knots would benefit from new systematic names. For example, salt is an old and venerable name, but we all recognize the accuracy and usefulness of the newer name of sodium chloride. These new names would not replace the old names, but would supplement the traditional names. Now, for purposes of identifying Matthew Walker knots and methods, I'm going to tie the three-strand Matthew Walker. Uh, one reasonable method for tying this is to make three loops in such a manner. And we take the end of each of these loops and pass it through the next available loop. such as this. And at this point we have what is known as a wall knot. And um, this is actually 671. But to get to Matthew Walker, we pass each one of those through again the next available loop. Then we pull these up and we roll all three of those up one position, <clears throat> pull it tight, and we have the Matthew Walker. Now, common to all Matthew Walkers, this has three strands, it has three faces. There will be a, a turn, and an underlying base knot, turn, underlying base knot, another turn, and an underlying base knot. Um, they, these can be tied three strands, four strands, five strands, up to any number of strands. Um, if you can do it. The um, three strand uh, Matthew Walker is demonstrated in Ashley at 683, number 682, and number 730. Um, Ashley demonstrates the four strand as number 692. I'm now going to tie the two strand Matthew Walker tied by the same method. Take two strands, we do exactly the same thing as we did before, form a couple loops, pass it through once, which is the wall knot, pass it through again, which is the Matthew Walker. We roll up one, we roll up two, and we pull it tight, and we have the two strand Matthew Walker. Now, if you, if you keep adding, if you pass this through another one, such as pass it through there one more time there, and one more time here, then, and then you have to roll those up, you end up with, again, this is a double two-strand Matthew Walker. Here are the ends of the base knot. My thumbs are on them. Here are the two... Here are the two turns overlying the base knot. There are two faces because there are two strands. Again, the ends of the base knot and the two turns. Now, identifying the ends of the base knots are very important for higher level knots. Two strand, somewhat important. 
but they all have base knot and turns and this is two turns the triple uh, would have uh, three turns the uh, Ashley shows the two strand as set number seven seven six uh, he shows the triple Matthew Walker loop as number 1065 and a four turn two strand uh, Matthew Walker is in Ashley as not number 777. Uh, now I would like to all, next show if we if we again make uh, our loops and we pass this through one time and we pass it through one more time we end up with what has traditionally been known as a two-strand wall knot. And uh, as you can see, we have two faces. And what we have here is the underlying base knot with no turn. There's no turn on either one of these. So um, this should be known as a zero-turn two-strand Matthew Walker. Um, this this is demonstrated in Ashley is number 237 number 775 and it's also known as a two strand walnut now I'm going to demonstrate what do we do with a single strand well with a single strand we would pass it through once pass it through twice roll up like we've always done and what would we have? We would have a single strand Matthew Walker. We'd have the underlying base lot knot and a single turn. Now this is demonstrated in Ashley number 1239 which he calls the strangle knot. Uh, it's also demonstrated as number 516 which he calls the blood knot for the cat of nine tails and it is also known as number 1255 the transom knot and is also known as a double overhand uh, here's a single overhand here's a double overhand if you roll up a double overhand you have a single strand uh, matthew walker knot now this can be tied uh, as a as a double by tying it in this method this method you can uh, you tie it that becomes a what Matthew Walker and if you tie two turns it becomes a double single strand Matthew Walker there's the ends of your underlying base knot are here and here and you have two sta two strands um, Ashley shows this type of knot as number 517, number 3440, number 2106, number 2203, and number 2205. The triple single strand Matthew Walker is shown in Ashley as number, uh, knot number 1240. Um, now, I would like to demonstrate another aspect. If we start to tie uh, a single strand Matthew Walker and we stop here, we have only the underlying base knot with no turns. So this knot should, in a Matthew Walker world, should be known as a single strand zero turn Matthew Walker or could be known as a single strand turnless Matthew Walker um, this is demonstrated actually number 514 519 and 1794